October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is when we take the time to stop and educate individuals of the importance of breast cancer screenings. Here today, we have highly experienced oncologist David Reisman with Baptist Medical Group Oncology to share with us the importance of your annual breast exam, the different types of screenings there are, and the support groups that are available to us in our community. Dr. Eastman, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. To get started, share a little about yourself and your experience as an oncologist. Sure, I did my undergraduate at UC Berkeley, and then I matriculated to University of Texas where I did my MD PhD. <clears throat> and then I went to University of North Carolina and did my uh, residency and fellowship. And then I took my first appointment, academic appointment at the University of Michigan for eight years, and then um, my wife decided it was too cold there, so we went down to the University of Florida for seven or eight years. And then when our kids went to college, we decided to do something different. So um, I, again, matriculated to Baptist Hospital to spend a more, I guess, transition to a different phase of, of life here. Well, we know that uh, early detection is so important. And when we're Correct. talking about <clears throat> early detection, um, how often should we do a, a self-examination? Self-examinations are always encouraged. They unfortunately have not been proven to change survival of breast cancer, but there are plenty of anecdotal people who have found cancers by self-exam, so we encourage it. But we also must do mammograms because they have been shown to be impact survival, especially over women over 50, and particularly the women between 60 and 70, it has the highest impact just because the rate of breast cancer is so high in that group. Mm. Now, during self-examination, tell us what's normal, what's not normal. <clears throat> well, women should do it regularly, preferably facing the mirror so they can see, and what they want to do is be accustomed to their you know, shape, sizes, colorations, and what they're looking for is changes, either lumps, redness, um, changes in, in the skin texture, puckering, or um, nipple discharge, any of those things which are different should perk their interest and they should seek medical attention. Okay, now what is a mammogram? What does that look like? And <coughs> at what age should women begin to pursue mammograms? Um, mammograms should definitely be yearly um, from age 50 on. There is some controversy about starting at age 40. Mm -hmm. Just because the incidence of breast cancer is so low, it's hard to do statistical analysis and show that they increase survival. But intuitively, uh, if women have any history of breast cancer, like a first-degree relative, like a mother, sister, especially if the breast cancer was early, like 40s and 30s, um, they should have early detection starting age 40. If they happen to know that they have a breast cancer gene that runs in their family, BRCA1 or BRCA2, it actually should start probably in their mid-20s or 30s. Okay. Um, for your second question, mammograms are x-rays like a chest x-ray. What they do is they flatten out the tissue so it's thin so they can see different textures within the breast tissue. They have upgraded that to take several different x-rays of the tissue in different planes. So they, rather than one picture, they have five or six pictures so they can look at different depths to see if there's any abnormalities. Microcalcifications are usually a tip-off that something is abnormal, and those things usually either go to ultrasound or ultrasound and guide biopsies to figure out what they may be. Now, how effective are these mammograms? Uh, they're very effective. They're proven to increase survival because, you know, they detect things which are, have a higher probability of being cancer. Now, there are some false positives, and the false positives go up in younger women because their incidence is lower. Mm -hmm. So you're more likely, you know, if you have a lump, it's more likely benign when you're 40 than you're 50. Okay, now there's a difference, right, between <clears throat> 2D and 3D yes. mammograms? Tell us about 3Ds that. 3Ds are actually more sensitive. They actually recommend the 3D for women who have either had a breast cancer because they're at higher risk for getting a second one, or women who have a strong family history. They just want to be more thorough in their investigation and not miss something that might be 
um, questionable. Okay. Tell us more about the, the family history. How far back should, should we go and, and be worried? It's usually first degree relatives. Okay. okay. Usually somebody inherits the gene and it causes risk of somewhere between 50 and 80 percent of getting breast cancer during a lifetime. It also puts you at risk for ovarian cancer. Um, for men, if they inherit BRCA2, uh, they have a risk of male breast cancer. So male breast cancer is 1% of total breast cancers. So males do get it. It's just we don't talk about it. Um, but usually it's going to be first degree relatives, grandmothers, um, mother, sisters. If those particularly have a history of breast cancer and the breast cancer is early in life, then you become suspicious. Testing is very easy to do. You just need a swab of your mucosa in your mouth and they sent away for genetic analysis. And I just called somebody this morning and told them that the results were negative. And it, for them, it made a difference in whether they got a mammogram or mastectomy. Because if they're at risk, they don't want to have to, you know, do surveillance and have this happen again. So if they're at risk, they'll remove the breast. That's what happened to Angela, Angela jo Jolie. Mm -hmm. she, her mother died of breast cancer. She was BRCA1 positive, so she had a double mastectomy just to eliminate her risk. Okay. Now, if someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, mm -hmm. what does the treatment usually look like, and does that treatment differ depending on how early it was detected? It does. It depends on if they have estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor expressed in their breast tissue. So let me just stop and talk about that. Um, estrogen receptor is one of those things that makes the cancer grow. And if you can block that stimulus, you actually block the evolution of the cancer. So they recommend to do anti-hormone therapy for at least five years. It's probably going to be 10 years now. And you can understand that if you block the, the stimulus, it's like putting it in the freezer. It just sort of um, prevents it from ever coming back. So anybody who is ER positive, and particularly those are ER PR positive, they recommend anti-hormone therapy after all therapy is done for five, probably more like going to be 10 years in the near future. If, there, if you have an early breast cancer, um, usually you have a choice between either lumpectomy or mastectomy. So lumpectomy with radiation is, is equivalent to mastectomy in preventing early recurrence. Mm. Okay, um, If you get lumpectomy, you have to have radiation to the tumor bed. If the cancer spreads a little bit and begins to involve the lymph nodes in the axilla, then they will have to do what's called an axillary dissection. They'll remove all the lymph nodes and see which ones are positive. It used to be standard of care that they would do this for all women. But what they have found out is that there's about a 30% chance that women will get swelling of the arm because they disrupt the lymphatic drainage. Mm. And so they have a big sausage arm, and it's not very pleasant. So to prevent that and to prevent unnecessary actually dissections, they started doing what's called sentinel lymph nodes. They'll put a little bit of radioactivity in the tumor bed and figure out what's the first lymph node downstream because that's where the tumor is going to go first. They'll take that lymph node out and do many cross sections and have the pathologist look at many slides. And if it's tumor free, they stop. If that lymph node has tumor in it, then they'll go on to complete a full axillary dissection. If you have lymph nodes positive in the axilla, then you'll get radiation to the axilla to make sure because the surgeon can't get out all the lymph nodes. So to sterilize any lymph nodes, which the surgeon doesn't remove, they'll do radiation so you don't have recurrence in the axilla. Gotcha. Well, it, it's an incredibly <laughs> important topic. It, 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 it's a little complicated to <laughs> yeah. say, it, it, you know, to, to explain, but hopefully the, the essence have come through. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on and discussing it with us. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah.